Welcome to Morning Devotions and Lessons from the New Testament Church. As we continue to look at uh, the early church um, in the New Testament and um, connect it with our Bible studies on Wednesday mornings with the Apostle Paul. And today we're going to, I hope, connect it not only with our Bible studies, but also Lent and um, our Sunday morning um, sermons on All You Need Is Love. So, let's start with the text, which is Colossians 1, 21 through 23, which is just a couple verses after yesterday's reading. And Paul writes, Once you are alienated from God and were enemies in your mind because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This gospel that you heard, that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is an amazing text to me. Because it uh, points out two important things about our salvation. First, that it's very personal. That it is for us. That God has uh, died for us. Jesus died for us on the cross personally. That if we had been the only thing in creation, that God would send his son to die on the cross for us. You know, it's like that old phrase that um, um, an old... Um, Oh, chestnut, I guess, where uh, a person asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And Jesus said this much, and he spread out his arms and died. It's very personal. Jesus died for you. That's what we remember starting on Ash Wednesday, which was yesterday. And that's what we remember through Lent up to Good Friday, the depths of God's love. But it's not just personal. There's a universal quality. Again, notice what Paul says. This gospel that you have heard and that has pro been proclaimed to every creature under the heaven of which I, Paul, have become a servant. You know, John says it another way in that verse right after 316. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that who should ever believe in him shall have eternal life. Indeed, God, and this is 3.17, indeed, God didn't send the Son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might have life through him. So when you become a Christian, when you accept Jesus Christ, it's not just personal, but God now enlists you in his family, in his kingdom, that you might reflect that love to creation. Because God's mission isn't just to you but to all creature, all creatures under the sun, as Paul says. That's an amazing thing. God wants to use us to reach and renew his creation. And there will come a time when every knee will bow and every tongue confessed, as Paul says in Philippians, that Jesus Christ is Lord. What a joy. What a confidence and a hope we can have knowing that God has history in his hands. I hope that gives you hope for this day. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for saving us. Help us to reflect your love to the creation. We pray this in the one who died for us and who was resurrected to give us the promise of eternal life, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, today, be hope-filled, stay strong, and God bless.